I think what's happening in classrooms today is that, uh, let's say you're at a climbing wall. So the children represent the climber and the teacher represents the instructor out there. You're the climber and I'm the teacher. What I'm doing is uh, telling you what to do on that wall. There's a whole bunch of holes. There are choices that you can make what you see and what I see are not the same. But because I am standing on the ground with my perspective, I'm telling you, okay, your next step is to do this. Reach out your right arm and hold that blue. That's what's happening. Now, there's another piece to this. You're on a rope. Somebody is holding you up. I'm calling the rope the schooling system. As your teacher, I'm not even aware of whether the rope's been pulled tight, you're being held, there's slack, there's no slack. You're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. Somebody's supposed to be doing their thing and their job, but I don't have a connect with that person belaying you at all. So as a teacher, my back is to the system and I'm asking you to climb that wall under my instructions. So, and you're wondering, as a student, you're saying, hey, there are five different ways of looking at history. But I'm telling you, hold that one because that's the one that's going to give you marks in the exam. Okay, that's the current scenario. So a couple of years ago, there's this guy called Alex Honnold. And he climbed a 3,500 foot rock patch, unaided. What does that mean? No protection, no ropes, nothing. Just him and the rock. For Alex, it was a one-way street. There was no return. There was no belay, there was no bailing out. Once he had made that decision to do that piece in a particular way, he was committed. But think about this. He came to that place and that ability after 10 years of meditating on that rock. There's one particular move which he apparently did more than a hundred times with ropes. And he struggled with it. I think life is like that. Um, the intent of experiential aid, of this approach, needs to be one of saying to the students that here's this wall of life. It's going to be real for you. You are going to climb it. And you might think there are people down there and people up there cheering you up and pushing you on and so on and so forth. But the move that you make every moment is yours. And if you, if you miss it, if you fail, there's no one to blame. You made that choice. So, uh, ideal scenario is uh, all these experiential educators of the world being Alex Honnolds, climbing that wall, knowing that the intent of what we do is to get people to that place because it isn't just rock climbing. It's meditation in every moment of that experience. And wouldn't that be brilliant? The guys who were shooting the film were his friends. And they knew what potentially could happen. They never knew when he was going to wake up and start that climb. Every morning was a new morning. So this was his support system. And every morning you wake up and you say, I don't know where that child is going to be. I don't know when they're going to take off on that journey and make sense of the world. So therefore, if Alex wakes up at four o'clock in the morning, I wake up four o'clock in the morning and I better have my cameras and my equipment and everything ready because there is no second chance. Oh, it just makes me. <laughs> yeah. There is no second chance. You can't say, oh, you know, I slept through it. 
Alex is already halfway up the damn wall and here I am with my cameras and equipment not ready. And the guy has followed him for two years. Can you imagine what it was like? One. And this guy, he, he meditated on that mountain. Uh, he knew every move he was going to make. And when you watch that final climb, you can say whatever you want in your head. But that is art. That is... Uh, that's, I think, the best that he could have been on that day. And if we can do this with every wall in life, for me, that's experiential ed. <laughs>